Evening, everyone. Thanks for joining the stream tonight. So, what's the plans for today? Um, well, we've got a ZG raid in around an hour. Um, before then, um, I was going through some wow news and videos on YouTube and I came across a video uh, talking about World Bus um, done by uh, Def Camp and Melderon. Um I've not watched it yet it's uh, talking about a World Bus an exploit so what I thought I'd do is uh, watch that along with you guys and put my thoughts to it and see what you all think about it if you want to get involved, please type along in chat and give me your opinions as well. So, uh, here we go. Let's have a look at this video. Just going to uh, pause, disc, pause Spotify a sec. So... All right, let's have a look at this. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Melderon here. Before I get started with this video, I'd like to state that this is obviously an opinion piece. Something that my brother and I pride ourselves on is that we have built a community that digests ideas and discusses them rather than a community that just takes what we say as gospel. We never want to create an echo chamber of thought. Fair enough. Rather, we firmly believe that discourse and freedom of ideas and conversation are of the utmost importance. So if you agree or disagree with this opinion, let us know. As long as you are respectful, we will do our best to reply. Also, we'd like to thank Druid Theory Crafter and friend Taladril for helping us write this script. I realize that the title of this video may seem extreme. However, the reason is simple. Blizzard devs are undertaking the massive task of bringing us classic and they are being as faithful as they can to make the game as close to original oh, as possible. I applaud their efforts, and they are doing a great Didn't job. Realize. However, I expect that they are going to make a mistake by implementing world buffs as is. World buffs existed in vanilla and should exist in the game, with their mechanics and effects unchanged, but with one exception. World buffs should be removed from players automatically when they zone into a raid instance. Ooh. This video will explain world buffs. Hmm. Interesting, interesting concept. Don't know how I feel about that. Um, talk about it more in a bit. We'll get a bit more into the uh, video and see uh, what comes out of it, but that's something I wasn't expecting from this. Buffs impact on raids, the damage they do to player experience, and why their use, specifically in raids, is the definition of a significant gameplay exploit. We can all agree that Vanilla had a lot of unique quirks and oddities. An exploit? Um, I think it's a bit of a bold statement. Um, I wouldn't consider, personally, will bust an exploit. Um, it's just part of the game. Um, well, we'll just carry on viewing and see what they say. However, things that constitute exploit in the game are not beneficial to the health of the game. I hope that anything found to be something that meets the criteria of an exploit, regardless of its presence in vanilla, would be fixed by the developers for Classic. Before going into the discussion, let's go over what an exploit is. Okay. From Wikipedia, in video games, an exploit is the use of a bug or glitches, game system, rates, hitboxes, speed or level design, etc. by a player to their advantage in a manner not intended by the game's designers. Keep this definition in mind when... But if Will Bus are designed by the game's designers to do what they're intended to do, I, I don't understand how you can class that as an exploit. It's part of the game, but well, keep enough man, keep listening. Seeing how world buffs affect the user experience. You will see that world buffs are an exploit because players utilize the game's system to their advantage to simplify raid encounters. And this behavior was not intended by the original developers. 
With the understanding of how world buffs could fit the criteria of being an exploit, let's turn to some pros and cons of their presence in the game and then get into the day-to-day -day of how they are utilized by the okay. players. World buffs add a significant incentive to do world PvP events. This is probably the biggest pro to keeping world buffs in as is. Yeah. World buffs are understandably extremely sought after, so it can be incredibly rewarding for a But what about PvE servers? Um, swings and roundabouts rip both ways. Guild to lie in wait to destroy an opposing faction's guild who's about to enter their weekly raid with world buffs. Additionally, with solo PvP play, players such as priests can remove world buffs while lying in wait at raid instances to the same effect. World buffs cause more general world interaction. <coughs> Since you get these in Dire Maw, on yeah. Zandalar Island, in Felwood, and even at the Dark Moon Fair, your chances of running across opposing faction players. He has a good point there. What world buffs do do, um, it does get players out of their cities, uh, their faction cities. It does make them get around a bit more, so. Uh, there's a bit more interaction with people, um, but if we're talking about griefing and removing um, world bus prior to a guild raid and if they're going into a raid, um, to me that's the person's choice on how they want to play. They've got two choices, they can uh, play a PvP or a PV server. Um, that's only going to happen on a PvP server if players don't want to risk uh, being ganked, which, to be honest, is part of the game. Uh, then you play a PV server. It's as simple as that. It's a player choice, and I don't think because a player has a choice, you could really class it as an exploit. But let's carry on. Players is higher. World buffs provide additional competition for the highest level guilds. Mm -hmm. A wipe will be a guaranteed loss of any chance of competitiveness from that guild or any member of that raid team for the week. The guilds that do the content without wiping will be the competition to beat. In general, world buffs make... Let's just go back to that point again. ...guilds that do the content without wiping will be the competition to beat. In general, world buffs make your hmm. character... So, yeah, I can understand that. Yeah, it's a good point. Um, But in a game that's 15 years old... Um, competitive plays good um, because it's one of the things that keeps an old game going and keeps it alive in my opinion um, which is nothing wrong with that at all uh, because there are hundreds and hundreds of players who play WoW and who've come back to Classic that play it for that um, they want to be the best that they can be and they want to be in guilds that are going to go out and try and do will first and server first and the quickest ones in Blackwing Lair, etc. But we'll uh, have another look. We'll go back and get on to point three. Content without wiping will be the competition to beat. In general, world buffs make your character feel a lot stronger, mm -hmm. which can be fun for DPS and tanking classes. I think this reason is why there isn't a discussion about this issue. To so is summed it up in one word there when he said fun. Um, it does make it feel stronger, it does make it more fun in the game. And once again, it's uh, down to player choice. A player doesn't have to choose to get world buffs or not. Uh, well, not in our guild anyway. Uh, but if a game that's 15 year old isn't fun, um, what's the point of it? The game would have died quite a while ago. You have to keep that fun element involved in the game. So, yeah, that's a pro. To discuss it is to invite a nerf to yourself, and we all know how important it is to see those big numbers. Am I right? Lastly, world buffs foster a sense of accomplishment. This goes with the mentality that if you work hard, you should be rewarded well. In other words, those that put in the effort and the time to achieve these buffs feel accomplished. There are likely other pros that people might throw out there, but this hits all of the big points. Now let's move to the cons, where honestly, there are quite a few. Going back to pros as well, um, one thing that is missed out is um, some people actually enjoy going and doing these things and getting the buffs as well. It's that's one thing that is that has been missed, um, and I know some people actually thrive in in their own sort of economic bubble uh, to provide assistance for world bus for instance and 
on the server I play on, um, there are people who will actually go and do tribute runs and charge people to go in afterwards. Um, and it's a way that they make gold for themselves to boost and enhance their own game. So that's uh, another pro on there as well. Let's start by rebutting the world PvP point since people generally care about this aspect the most. World buff PvP action is short-lived and oriented around ganking. It isn't like epic battles in South Shore versus Taran Mill. One side just wants to get their buffs and then go into the raid, and the other is just looking to stop them. Once one side is victorious, everyone moves on. The opportunity provides the incentive, and destroying a whole raid is fun, but it is not yeah, it continued is. organic open world PvP. PvP is PvP. It doesn't matter what your class is organic or what isn't organic. Um, when he's talking back to like battles with Taran Mill, if you're going to class PvP in that sort of niche, uh, the only time you'll ever see PvP in that aspect that's organised that well is when you're going to get Horde attacking Iron Forge and Stormwind. And vice versa, when you get Alliance attacking uh, Ogrimmar and Undercity. Not Thunder Bluff, because there's never anybody there, but um, because that, that PvP is epic, and that can be done on both PvP and PvE servers. Um, but talking about ganking people again, going into raids and removing the world bus, that's part of the game. That's part of PvP. That's not just a WoW thing. Uh, that's going back to games I pray previously like Lineage 2 as well and um, it is part of the game and it's part of the choice you take if you join the PvP server if you don't want that join the PvE server and um, if it is that much of an issue um, maybe you know, people need to be approaching devs or something like that It'd probably never happen uh, but if they can make a flask stays above through death why not make Wilbur stays above through death uh, so if you if you are search it on a PvP guild and you have a small guild so you're on a PvP server and you're a small guild and you're rocking up for your Blackwing Lairs week after week and you're getting ganked by much larger guilds on a different faction um, wouldn't it be better if those Wilbur didn't drop on death you kept you when you got those Wilbur you had them for the amount of time that they were I don't know it's just, I suppose, another option, whether it's viable or not, whether Blizzard could, Blizzard could implement it, I don't know. Additionally, talking about PvP and competition, there would be strong incentive towards collusion between guilds and factions to sabotage top-performing guilds from doing raids with world buffs. That comes back to the PvP, though. I don't think there's anything wrong with the collusion and cross-guild faction and things like that. It's again it's part of the game um, I'm going to go back to my days in Lineage 2 uh, massive PvP game um, if you've never heard of it go check it out it's one of the it was back in the day one of the biggest uh, MMORPGs um, part of that game where you formed alliances with other guilds there was no factions as such a anybody could kill anybody um, you could even kill people in your own guild um, so it's all about trust, um, but it was a bit more realistic in the in the form that you could actually form alliances just for your own need, then betray them and go to somewhere else to carry on getting your need out of the game as a guild. Um, it's just it's like real life, isn't it? You those things can happen in real life as well uh, by nasty, manipulated people. I'm not saying it's a good thing, but. Um, I don't see anything wrong with that at all. Or even for top guilds to keep in check lesser guilds on the same server with planned attacks against these guilds on their raid day. World buffs are a de facto requirement for virtually any quality guild. Even low level guilds still will put a lot of pressure onto people to get buffs before every raid. Again, that's choice. Um, if you're play this game and your intention is to be in one of the top girls in the world and pass at 99 or 100 or whatever and you want to be the best you're making that choice to join that guild and you would know the requirements so 
that doesn't mean it's an exploit it's personal choice likewise if you don't want to get a little bus you just look for a guild that's more relaxed for instance the our guild um we don't make people get world bus um it's not a requirement uh even myself as a raid leader um i will only ever get well not full world bus i'll get dm tribute bus um the rallying cry the dragon slayer from nefanoni and the zandalar buff and that's it and that's just for blackwing lair um i don't even bother with um i, I may get um rallying cry the dragon slayer for a molten core but like zil good where we're going tonight don't bother with anything uh it's the way you want to play and to me parsing and damage meters aren't everything unless it's um you are really pushing and wanting to progress um i understand them being important in terms of recruitment um because if you if a player joins a guild such as ours we do look at logs um but we always take buffs and things into consideration if everybody's buffed in the raid we will buff um obviously and if someone who's joined the guild knew is still passing really bad we take that into consideration it's a, it's about player choice um and with our guild it's something that's not forced um but when we do do blackwing like quite a few of us do we do it but personal choice and we enjoy doing it and even myself like i said earlier about people charging uh, for instance last night in a blackwing lair run um i just rocked up at the mall to log out ready to uh, do the tribute bus later on and there was a guy stood outside um selling they'd done the tribute run they'd cleared it out and they were selling spaces to go in and get world bus for five gold which is pocket change really so i just gave him five gold went in got me bus and i came out and he did me a portal to stillman so again it's personal choice and it took five minutes so you don't even have to do a tribute run because there are plenty of people out there will tell you those buffs said as well um so it's it's not as i said it's not forced it's player choice getting world buffs is busy work drudgery that forces people to do the same thing over and over again while you might say the same about consumables remember that these can be bought with gold and you can farm gold in many different ways adding more mm -hmm. gameplay variety after getting world buffs, you must log off your character so that the buff timers don't go away. People routinely get buffs the day before the raid, meaning that your main character is inaccessible from anywhere between an hour before the raid to a day or even longer. This, in my opinion, negatively impacts the game as the world feels more empty. You are missing out on social interactions that may benefit the server as a whole. Since No, I don't agree with that. Um... I would say 99.9% .9 of uh, players in the game now um, have got alts, max level alts. Uh, so even on your main, if you uh, do get bus, I mean, to go to the extreme of getting your bus the day before and logging out, no. Nah. Uh, we just get the DM bus an hour or so before we raid and log out. Um, but even if you are logging out a lot earlier it's your choice and as i said um most people have got alts nowadays so there still is that interaction you're still playing the game there's still a lot of communication with people in your guild as well so uh to me that's a bit of a non-issue world buffs have such a strong effect and a raid wipe removes these buffs high performing players in non top tier guilds won't be able to compete directly in standings against those in top guilds world again it's choice some guilds want to go out and break records and some guilds don't it's buffs effectively boost the group as well as the individual while members of guilds who lack world buffs hinders both the group and the individual and because of the direct issue in the con above, losing world buffs in raids is the ultimate morale destroyer. The effect of world buffs being lost sours an entire raid night and can happen within the first five minutes of the raid. This effect is predictable and extremely unpleasant to be part of. So once again, that can come down to whether Blizzard could introduce something such as um, 
making uh, world buffs um, livable through death uh, so they don't come off you when you die like a flask i don't know but um i've never seen it breed toxicity in uh, any of our runs when we've wiped um but i think if we, we play this game for fun we play it because we enjoy it um if you would let dropping world bus affect you that much i think you really um, have psychological problems it's a game at the end of the day and it's like i said player choice so far i've mentioned six cons and i haven't even gotten to the biggest problem of world buffs world buffs flat out trivialize content i'll say that again world buffs flat out trivialize end game pve content Right. End game content at the moment is trivial anyway. Um, I wish it wasn't, but it is, and that's nothing to do with world bus because you can clear content quite easily now in classic without world bus. There's no need for world bus to clear content and make it um, trivial. Um, I think the reason people, like I said, are world bus because they enjoy getting them. It's fun. They can do things a little bit quicker, and those guilds that do want to uh, go out and set records can do that. But to say they trivialise content, no, because the game has evolved in 15 years. 15 years ago in vanilla, when we used to play vanilla, I remember raiding Molten Core, and I was in um, Beast, uh, Beast Slayer Hunter Gear for months before I was getting gear. Um, but nowadays there's that much information available to players uh, in terms of resources that can help them understand uh, mechanics of a boss fight better and what they need to do within that fight a lot better uh, the understanding in gear is a lot better and players are actually there's a little bit of an imbalance what blizzard have introduced in the gap between gear that's available and knowledge of it and the f encounters that we're doing at the moment um, so to me the encounters are way behind gear level so it's gear makes it trivial I'm hoping by the time we come to AQ that balance is a little bit more even in AQ is a little more difficult but I don't think will bus trivialize PV content I think the contents pretty trivial you can pretty trivial without will bus to be honest Anybody can clear any content in the game at the moment without world bus. People do so much more damage and get a lot of increased survivability as well. Put that together and you can stomp content way easier, faster, and ignore many of the mechanics because of quick kill times. Stacking world buffs mm -hmm. provides between 30 to 60% more total raid damage depending on the class and role. No, I'm not exaggerating. And additionally, over a 30% health pull increase for the entire raid. Let me reiterate, depending on the class, world buffs add up to a 60% increase to damage. Having an entire raid with full world buffs increases raid strength to crazy levels. To put this in perspective, this is along the same lines of comparing two players' effectiveness where one has an optimal DPS build and the other has literally no talent points even assigned. No. Yes, it is that big of a difference. We can see that with this list, while world buffs may add a lot of fun with but personal we're talking about this being an exploit and more world encounters i've not there are seen anything that yet that white would be an repetitive exploit. busy work to get buffs immediately followed by required downtime in the form of logging off or playing on alts becomes the norm raids with world buffs are easier to the point of trivial for some but that's why instantly there are world buffs and that's why when a mistake the game. happens and a wipe removes all of the buffs all this because of an artificial inflation of hidden flavor due to buffs that were never planned to be all stacked together. Let's take a little tangent to go over what the experience is like for players if world buffs are a thing in Classic. Those of you that haven't been around the private server scene can benefit from seeing how the flow works. You'll start out by taking a flight over to Feralis and then ride over to Dire Maul. Since your guild will often do it around the same time, one or two groups will do a quick tribute run. 
Once done, everyone there will enter a raid group, and with a cap of five people concurrently in the dungeon, one by one people will trickle in, piggybacking off the yep. initial clear to get the buffs and then leave either by hearth or port. If you are acquiring these buffs the day before the raid, then you now log that character off until raid day. That's right, you can't play your main character until the actual talks about raid that starts. If you've got an ult. On raid day, or immediately following your Dire Maw buffs, you will go to Stormwind or Orgrimmar and log off. Since the Onyxia and Afarian heads are on a timer, you'll now have to have a personal or guild-wide scout who will let you know when the buff is going out. By the way, the respawn timer is somewhere between 2 to 8 hours. Once the buff process starts, you'll have less than a minute to quickly log your character in to nab the buff. After getting it, you'll go ahead and log off now because the last buffs you'll get will be immediately before the raid. Okay, it's almost time to start the raid. Everyone is talking either on Discord or with alt since their mains are logged off saving buff timers. Once the raid is ready to go, people will log on and quickly make their way to Zandalar Island either by flying, hearth, or summons. Once there, you get the ZG buff, and then everyone can finally head to the raid. However, some guilds look to get additional buffs. This Felwood Songflower takes more summons, or the entire raid flying over, and additionally you can also get Warchief's Blessing in Orgrimmar, which is really hard to get consistently. At this point you're either wearily nodding with the familiarity of it all, or you are shaking your head saying there is no way that people will do this weekly. And you're right. They will do it twice a week. Never underestimate what people will do to take the easy route in an MMO and roll buffs are a quintessential easy route. Many of you guys are probably saying now, no, I refuse to believe that casual guilds will go through with this. This is a hardcore guild issue only. I'm sorry, but it won't be. We can see how guilds function on private servers to know exactly how this will play out. The requirement for roll buffs seeps into every guild and it's we're easy not playing to see private why. Service. Oh, don't you hate ads? Straight to their door with Moonpig.com. Yeah, you get Download the app now to Mum, Dad, Mel, Josh, Sadia, blah, blah, Sam. Blah. Best wishes, birthday wishes, thinking of you. Hooray for you. Love from us all. Send your love straight to their door with Moonpig.com. Send your love. What? Early on, a guild may say no to world buffs. It's overkill and we don't need them. Life is good. But then one or two raiders gets them anyway, and now top the meters week after week. Now others in the guild want to see what they can from. do to compete against them. And they also see the strength of the buffs. So they get them too. And on and on and on until those truly casual enough to not care about raid progress at all are the ones not doing it. What's the real motivation for this? Meters? No, it's loot. Top performers have a better chance to get good gear. No. Don't agree with that. Depends on the loot system you run as well. Um, again, I know I'm going back to our guild, but we run CPGP. It doesn't matter if you've got well bust and performance to get loot. It's how many points you've got. It's how much you've earned. It's how, many, how much time you spend raiding, how many bosses you kill, etc. We don't individually target people that way because that's pretty unfair um if you are in a guild where it's the reward the top performers obviously that's more of a hardcore guild but you have the choice to be in that environment or not if you aren't that then you aren't going to get the best items if you want the best you need to compete and you cannot compete against world buffs so it's either join or die the major effect of this is that it is such bad gameplay Look at all the downtime. Imagine game mechanics where the best way to play the game is to literally log out and not play your actual main character. But when you play the game that way, it makes you so overpowered that you trivialize the content that you do actually play. If you die, then it ruins your entire night. This is life with world buffs. I honestly believe this is an example of one of the worst gameplay designs in the history of World of Warcraft. Give no. me flying mounts. God. I can't believe I'm saying this, but even give me LFG. I don't care. It's not as bad as something LFG is out there anyway. for wanting to play the game with your main character. There's add-ons okay, for LFG. Back on topic. This video started by saying that even world buffs are an exploit. Bold statement. But hopefully the idea is softening a bit for you now. 
Let's keep going down this rabbit hole, shall we? We will now dive into a few historical exploits directly from Vanilla Well, starting with the most infamous one, the Paladin Reckoning Stacking Incident. Hmm. When this talent came out, there was no this. limit to the number of stacks you could build up. So someone was clever and spent hours building up hundreds of Reckoning Stacks. And then, with his stacks, he went one out and shot. one shot the world boss, Lord Kazakh, by himself. Blizzard then hotfixed this issue less than 24 hours later. <laughs> Here's a fun one, only fixed in patch 1.11, the Nax patch. Directly from the patch notes, instituted an anti-exploit measure on certain encounters, almost entirely raid bosses. These encounters will prevent people from zoning into the instance while that encounter is engaged. If you attempt to zone into the instance while that encounter is engaged, you will be resurrected I remember outside everybody we used to do this, this is primarily in... to combat graveyard rushing in instances. We used to do this in Mountain Cove. Before this fix, during Anixia for example, if you died, you could simply do a corpse run, yeah, re-enter the raid, yeah. and continue to attack the boss during the same attempt. An even more significant exploit for allowing more player chances during a boss when fight the was out of combat rezzing. Back in the day, when your raid attacked a boss, and if you personally didn't do anything, this is what he's you talking weren't about now. in combat. Well, early yeah. on, Molten Core was so hard, <laughs> um, I mean, we sucked so much that a common strategy to help defeat bosses was to have one or more paladins or shaman stand in the back and not engage and simply wait for someone to die, and then res them, heal them, and let them rejoin the fight. I remember that over well. and yeah. over again. We are so used to Players knowing that. Apart from always battle trying resins, to everyone gets with one the game. chance to live for each boss fight. It's crazy to think that strategies were based on the opposite. But that's Literally not an exploit. The boss and do it again. It's but part of the Blizz game that's quick, in the game at the right? time. It's not an right? exploit. No, this was a problem that plagued MC and Blackwing Lair, and only in patch 1.9.3, a month into AQ and over two years after the game's release, was a fix added to finally put a stop to it. Yeah, because These it's not exploits an exploit, and many more were all game. fixed in vanilla. However, that doesn't mean that simply looking at what was fixed in vanilla and what wasn't is a good enough line to draw on the sand. There are many known exploits that people discovered in vanilla. Most were fixed by the time TBC came out, but not all. And some exploits existed in vanilla but weren't discovered until TBC or even in Wrath. Here's an exploit that will absolutely be fixed in Classic even though it was one of the ones found in Wrath. Certain items existed that had 100% spell scaling. To explain this quickly, imagine an item that adds 2 fire damage to all of your melee attacks. By equipping gear focused on caster stats, if the gear added let's say 300 spell power, then now your melee attacks hit for 302 fire damage each attack. Enter the existence of what was dubbed the Fire Rogue. It's simply a rogue who wears a ton of caster gear and is based around the Blaze Fury Medallion because that item we imagined is real and that's how it behaved in vanilla. I say this will not be the case so confidently because this is an exploit. No changes would dictate that this remain at 100% scaling because that's how it was in vanilla. It's even how it was in TBC. Yeah. However, to be no changes would be to Green break God. the very function of the class. A rogue who does twice his normal DPS because he's wearing stuff geared for mages not intended. It's a completely All different concept to World Buffs. All these are ones that directly affect raids, and I doubt anyone would argue that these mechanics are not exploits or that we should see them in Classic. All of them clearly are beyond how the devs wanted the raid encounters to play out, and yet, World Buffs affect a raid far more than any of those exploits put together. Paladin Reckoning stacks, resing those that died in battle, and melee being built around a single item is still no comparison to buffs that increase raid wide DPS by 30 to 60 percent and increase the entire raid's health pool by over 30 percent. That, tied to the detriment of gameplay that affects how players play their characters just to accomplish this, world buffs are a game-breaking exploit that can't be allowed to be used in raid instances. No. One critical issue in talking about exploits is that something isn't an exploit unless someone is using it. It's emergent gameplay that causes these things to surface. For the vast majority of vanilla, world buffs weren't used as they will be today. Is that true? It's, as I've said earlier, the game's evolved. Um, the way people play the game evolves. People learn. Um, if something... I would doubt back in the day, n there would be 90 to 95% of people didn't even know what a world buff was. Whereas because the game's evolved, 99.9% .9 people now do know what they are. 
it's not an exploit it's part of the game and they're using that to enhance the game and make the gameplay better or just hearsay it's pretty well known that by Nax, or at least by the end of it, the key takeaway for many players was that you needed these things called world buffs to be able to actually kill content. But surely world buffs were known before Nax, maybe not to the noobs out there, but at least to the top like tier raiders. A recent count on the classic interview with Death and Taxes member 1927 on episode number 94 went over this exact issue. His time raiding with his guild spanned AQ progression. While consumable usage happened, the raid never utilized world buffs. The players were even aware of the buffs as he mentioned using them for PvP, however they didn't use them in raids. This was one of the top guilds in the world on the bleeding edge of content. If they didn't use world buffs, no one did. Here is a brief exactly. excerpt. Exactly, the games evolved. Yeah, that's what's funny. I hear about uh, guilds that get all the world buffs before going in and uh... I, you know, the only time I would really ever remember getting world buffs was for PvP, you know, uh, and to make the highlight video, I collected a few, nothing too crazy, but as a hunter, you were low on the priority for consumables, so that was really not something I ever experienced too much, but it certainly wasn't as hardcore as the way things are today, and you know, I heard about, you know, Method spending like 100 million gold going into debt to get their world first, but yeah, back then, things just... You know, it was a you know a simpler time, and things really hadn't got that competitive yet. So there was no real requirement. But like I said, Death in Texas was a very try-hard build, very competitive. So most of the members were engineers. But yeah, nothing you know, no requirement really as to what your professions were. You know, I think I was leatherworking and skinning just to level up. But you know, that turned out to be a relatively useless profession. But I, I you know, I wanted to make the switch to engineering because uh, you know grenades and stuff like that were you know, just coming into use by the time I was quitting, but I never really did, so no, it wasn't a requirement. Make sure to check out the full interview on CountOnTheClassic.com. It truly well, was the end the of the evolved. game where the idea of using world buffs in raids came out. By that point, we know, again, that the devs were already focused on TBC, so the idea that right, world so. buffs could trivialize content was an exploit that wasn't worth the devs' time. Casual guilds weren't using it, only those going after Nax gear were. And Nax was famous for almost no one experiencing the content. So who cares? Move on to problems that actually affect players. Okay, but Melderon, everyone says that world buffs are required for Nax. If we don't have world buffs in Classic, then we won't be able to actually beat Nax. No, they aren't. We don't we know that. We have learned so much about the game collectively as a community. Everybody said Nella. research continued with private servers. wouldn't be able to Though do they have their inherent inaccuracies, without will it is still no less it's true that trivial. they have been a massive vanilla WoW sandbox for years. People have optimized almost everything possible within the game. Well, Classic that's will no not wrong. need world buffs to beat Nax. I can guarantee you that. Many exploits have it's been found play in the and plenty were fixed, but some weren't. Exploits aren't always found and they aren't always fixed. The Paladin Wreck Bomb was solved instantly because it was so broken. Others like the spell scaling exploits weren't found, so weren't fixed. When an exploit oh, is fixed, it's fixed because of a combination of severity, ease of access, or frequency of use. We can see that world buffs perfectly be right fit back. the criteria of severity. I need the loo. Sorry about that. Feel better for it. Rarity, ease of access, and frequency of use to be an exploit. It is truly the trifecta of being a game-breaking issue. The effects of world buffs are severe and make challenging encounters easy and easy encounters trivial. Additionally, it imparts a lot of negative emergent gameplay not intended by the original developers. World buffs are extremely easy for people to access. Only the first five people in a 40-man raid have to even clear a Dire Maul tribute run. The other 35 can literally just run in the dungeon with no mental thought. The other buffs simply require you to stand in town or on an island. They are able to be used in every single raid. So, Dire Maul easy buffs to get. have no cooldown. Dragon Slayer can be activated twice per raid member, giving 40 full weeks of buffs at two buffs a week. And ZG can be used once per person, but there's a raid lockout for every three days for ZG, also allowing two buffs a week. ZG is also extremely easy and popular for alts to run, so there's a never-ending supply of them. If left into the game, we will see the use of world buffs as early as possible and utilize in every single... Has just said ZG 
is so easy to run, even on alts. So the whole concept of you using wheel buffs, it's an exploit. Uh, it makes um, raiding trivial and then content trivial. It's contradicted himself there because he's just said it's easy. It's about choice. If people want to get will bust, let them get will bust. It's not an exploit, it's part of the game. We'll raid unless the issue is fixed. How do we go about fixing it? Easy. World buffs don't need to be removed from the game at all. They no. provide a fun and interesting aspect to Classic. However, True. if a player enters a raid instance, these buffs should be removed no. from the player. All 20 and 40 man raids shouldn't allow for the use of world buffs in any way for completion of the content. Dire Maw, ZG, Ani, and Nefhead, Songflower, and the Dark Moon Fair buffs all should not work in raids. These buffs can still be enjoyed and used in PvP, in soloing, in world content, and in dungeon. Enjoyed in but PvP if you're on a PvE server. Buffs. The relevant longevity and success of Classic WoW significantly relies on PvE content being as difficult as possible. Thanks for listening to this epic dive in world buffs. Hopefully it was in So in order to make PvE content as difficult as possible, that's not world buffs. Um, Blizzard need to actually fix the game and not introduce items uh, a lot earlier than they did do back in the day and actually tweak the bosses a little bit entertaining and might have made you think about the game a little bit differently. You might agree with me, or you might not. It's a hard point to know what the devs would do since world buffs weren't removed in TBC or Wrath. It's just buffs. Buffs yeah, can't be an buffs. exploit, right? Nah. Oh hey, before I leave you, check this out. Patch 2.1.0. Fengus' Fury, Moldar's Moxie, Rallying Cry of the Dragon Slayer, Slipkick Savvy, and Spirit of Zandalar. These buffs will no longer work on targets over level 63. Yeah, because they were part of vanilla. They were introduced in vanilla. That's why they work in classic and they worked in vanilla. Three. How about that? I guess yeah, how about did that? fix this exploit after all. Keep on keep on No, they the game developed another expansion came out. A uh, completely different game. Different bosses, different high level bosses. It's not a to me that's the end of the video anyway. I'll, let me just check. And grinding everyone. I hope to see you all in Classic Azeroth. Yeah, so uh, I do understand some of the points where he's coming from uh, with the video. It's a good video. Um, certainly creates a lot of discussion. But are these things buffs, etc.? Uh, are these buffs, sorry, um, exploits? For me, they're not. It's part of the game. Um, players have a choice if they want to get them or not. Um, players have the choice on how they want to play the game. Um, so basically, if a player chooses to hardcore raid, um, wants to join a hardcore raiding guild, they were going out to try and do at least server firsts. Um, they making that choice and if that's what's expected until tell world buffs it's part of the game that's the choice that they've made uh, whereas guilds like my own it doesn't matter world buffs, we're not precious about world buffs um, it's an interesting video to watch uh, but for me a world buffs and exploit no far from it they're just part of the game and part of the mechanics of the game but yeah I enjoyed that, that was good, good to watch.